Amen. When I see her name on the sheet that she's pray, preaching today, it's a joy. A woman who manifests the word of God in her life, in her family, everywhere she goes, the Spirit of God will be there. Please, shall we welcome Miss Ashami to give us the word of God? Amen. 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 Get your friends and people ready. Amen. Amen. My daily bread. And my main scripture is in John 6, verse 26, but we are not going there yet. I'm just going to read Matthew chapter 6 from verse 11. I'll start actually from 9. Matthew chapter 6, verse 9, it says, Pray then. In this way, our Father, who is in heaven, our way be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Verse 11 is more and more concerned about it. It says, give us this day our daily bread and Jesus was telling us that this is how we should pray and when we pray we should ask him to give us this day our daily bread I hope somebody has already asked him to give you your daily bread this morning Amen. the model prayer talking about how we should pray and God wants to give us daily provision daily bread for each day on a daily basis not to carry the bread that I was given yesterday, no, but on a daily basis. And God wants us to trust Him. This morning, my sister led us to pray on trusting in God. And the thing about trusting in God, you don't know whether He's going to do it or not, but when you put your trust in Him, you will show up. He says he wants us to trust him to provide our daily bread. The Bible says that his messes are new every morning. So this morning you received new messes. So this morning you have received new bread. This morning you have received new wine. This morning you have received enough grace to carry you for the day. He has already provided provision to sustain you for today. On a daily basis. It's in Exodus chapter 16. It says from verse 1. 1 to 8. They feed, they fed out from Elim. And all the congregation of Israel came to the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elim and Sinai. On the 15th day of the second month, after they left the land of Egypt, the whole congregation of Israelites grew discontented and murmured and rebelled against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the Israelites said to them, Would that, would that we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the pots of meat and ate bread, until we were full. We are really thinking about food. Yeah. We sat by the pot of meat and ate bread until we were full. For you have brought us out of this wilderness to kill, to kill this entire assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I will cause bread to rain from heaven for you. The people shall go out and gather a day's portion every day, so that I may test them to determine whether they will, whether or not they will walk in obedience in my instruction. And it shall be that on the sixth day they shall prepare to bring in twice as much as they gather daily, so that they will not need to gather on the seventh day. So Moses and Aaron said to the Israel. At evening, you shall know that the Lord has brought you out of the land of Egypt, 
and in the morning you will see the glory of the Lord, for he hears your mourning against the Lord. What are we that you murmur and rebel against us? Moses said, this will happen when the Lord gives you meat to eat in the evening. And in the morning, enough bread to be fully satisfied. Because the Lord has heard your murmurings against you. For what are we? Your murmurings are not against us, but against the Lord. We did it in the presence of Moses and Aaron. But not when they're doing it to Moses and Aaron. They're doing it to God. When they were doing it, God said, I heard your murmuring. In spite of God hearing their murmuring, their complaints, their discontent, him still pick up. He provided for them. Amen. Don't we have a lovely God? Amen. Don't we have a lovely God? Amen. Verse 18. So in the evening the quails come and cover up and cover the camp. And in the morning there was a blanket of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew evaporated on the surface of the wilderness, there was a fine flake-like thing, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. And Moses said to them, This is the bread which the Lord has given you to eat. In their murmurings and their complaints, God provided. Amen. And they said, the funny thing, they said to Moses, you have taken us out of Egypt, where we had set with pots and everything. They are forgetting about the bondage that they were in. They are forgetting that they were in slavery. They are forgetting that they were not free, but they are thinking about food. <laughs> How she? But God being God, he provided food for them. Amen. And he provided food for them in the desert. Has God ever taken you in the desert? Sometimes God takes you in the desert so that he just wants you to see that it's only him you need. He takes you out of your comfort zone so that you can believe on something else other than what you have been comfortable with. He wants you to take you out of where you are, where you are content, so that you can see his goodness. Yeah. He wants to take you out in the desert so that you can be his provision. He can be your provision. Yeah. He can provide your daily needs. Yeah. That is the God who is there. God said to them, you shall go out and take bread daily. And on the sixth day, you take double, so that on the seventh day, you don't go out. But they were rebellious, and they took, not on the sixth day, on other days, they took extra. And the next morning, it came out with worms. Can you see how God is gracious that the, 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 when they take it, the day that they were not told, it had worms. But when they take it on the seventh day, it was as still as fresh. God does not want you to store bread for tomorrow. He wants you to trust him for today. He wants you to take you step by step. He said, I will order your step. Step by step, step by step. He wants you to trust you, to trust him on a daily basis. It had worms. And still they are complaining and being rebellious. But God is gracious. I just want to take you in a series where God provided people before I go to John chapter 6. But now I'll go to 2 Kings chapter 4. In 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 38 to 44, Elisha came back to Bethel during the plenary in the land. The sons of the prophet were sitting before him, and he said to his servant, Put on the large pot and stew, and cook stew, 
for the sons of the prophet. Then one of them went out in the field to gather help and found a wild vine and gathered from it a lapful of wild goats. I don't know how to pronounce that for me. And came and cut it up into the pot of stew. Although they did not know what they were, so they saved it for the men to eat. But as they ate the stew, they cried out, Oh, men of God, there is death in the pot. And they could not eat it. But he said, Bring flour. And he threw it into the pot and said, Save it for the people so that they may eat. There were there was then there was nothing harmful in the pot. Now at another time, a man from Baal Shalisha came and brought the men of God bread of the first fruits, twenty loaves of barley bread, and fresh ears of grain in the husk in his sack. And said, and Elisha said, Give it to the people affected by the famine so that they may eat. His servant said, How am I to set only this because of before a hundred hungry men? He said, Give it to the people so that they may eat. For thus says the Lord, They shall eat and have some left. So he set it before them, and they ate and left some in accordance to the word of the Lord. When you have time, I want you to read the whole chapter of Second Kings. You will see how God provided. But I will just summarize it. At the start of the chapter, we saw that there was a widow who was in debt. She had sons and they were in debt. And the debt collectors were coming after her. And she went to the man of God and the man of God says, what have you got? And she said, I am nothing but a little jar of oil. And she said, okay, go borrow empty bottles, close the door, and pour the anointing with the oil. When you pour the oil, go and sell it, and prepare it to your debtors, and you shall live on the rest. She, the man of God did not even know how much she had. She said little, but he had already prophesied that she's going to give everybody what debt she owed them, and she's going to have surplus. And he said, leave on it. And so did happen. She left, lived on surplus. We come across also the Shunammite woman who was contenting everything that she had. She said, I have everything. I live well with my people. But she did not have a son. And Elisha saw that she did not have a son. And she prayed, he prayed that by this time next year you will have a son. And the woman had a son. But lo and behold, the son died. And when the son died, the woman got her a donkey. She did not cry, she did not shed any tears, she did not even tell her husband. She ran to the man of God. I ran to the provider. When there's a problem, I run to the source. I don't run to a sister, I don't run to a brother, I run to the source. She ran to the source. She said to Elisha, I did not ask you for a son. You are the one who came and gave me a son. Now the son is gone. Elisha went. And he went to the son. And we saw the miraculous resurrection of the son. Elisha provided. Now we are seeing that now there is famine. And they have gathered a little bit and they have put pots to all the pots so that they can eat. And now in the two pots of stew, there is death. And Elisha said, go and take a little bit of flour, put it on the floor, on the, on the stew. He put it on and he gave them to eat. And when they gave them to eat, there was nothing harmful. Now what does flour resemble? Bread is made out of flour. So when you take the bread, when you take my daily bread, when you take the provision, when I bring Jesus to you, everything that has got taken to you, it comes to resurrection. Everything that is not problem, you will bring it up tonight. Vision. Any bad credit? What is 
is it that you need? Bring it to Jesus. Bring it to Jesus. That naughty son, that school that is not working, that job, that immigration status, that marriage, bring it to Jesus. Everything dead in your life. And you bring it to Jesus. And you trust him. He will bring it to life. John chapter 6. A large crowd was following him. Because they had seen the signs attesting miracles which he continually performed on those who were sick. And Jesus went up on the mountainside and sat down there with his disciples. On the Passover of the feast of the Jews was approaching. Jesus looked up and saw a large crowd was coming towards him and said to Philip, where will we buy bread for these people to eat? But he said this to test Philip, because he knew what he was about to do. Philip answered, 200 denarii, days, 200 days wages, worth of bread is not enough for each one to receive even a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, there is a little boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what are these for so many people? Jesus said, Have the people sit down to eat. Now, have the people sit down to eat. Now on the ground, they were covered with abundance of grass. So the men sat down, about 500 in number. And Jesus took two loaves when he had given thanks. He distributed them to those, to those who were seated. The same also with the fish, as, they, as much as they wanted. Take note, as much as they wanted. When they had ate enough, he said to his disciples, gather up the leftover quickly, so that nothing will be lost. First of all, he looked up and he saw the crowd coming. Then he asked Philip, what are we going to do to feed these people? And the Bible says that he asked him to test him, for he already knew what he was going to do. God has already provided your solution before the problem. You already know what he's going to do in your situation. The provision has already been done. The Bible says that before I were formed, I knew you. And he has already called you. Amen. A profession has already been declared on you. So if a profession has already been declared on you, which means that I've already got the job, Amen. I am not going to be in lack or anything because he has already provided for me. Verse 10, he said, Have the people sit down. And now on the ground, they were covered with abundance of grass. Psalms 23 says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And he makes me to lie down in greener pastures. He's telling them, Sit down where there's abundance of grass. Amen. So he has already provided everything. And we go now to verse 26. I assure you, and solemnly say to you, you have been searching for me, not because you saw the signs that tested miracles, but because you ate the loaves and you were filled. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures and leads to eternal life, which is the Son of Man who will give you. For God the Father has authorized him and put, put his seal on him. Then they said to him, What are we to do so that we may habitually be doing the work of God? Jesus answered, This is the work of God that you believe. Are dead, trusting, reliable, and have faith. And the one who he has sent. So they said to him, What signs attest miracles will you do that we may see and believe it? 
What supernatural work will you do as proof? Our fathers ate manna in the desert, as it is written in the scripture. He gave them bread out of heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, I assure you, and your family say to you, it is not Moses who has given you the bread out of heaven, but it is my father who gives you, who gives you true bread out of heaven. For the bread of God is, for the bread of God is he who comes down out of heaven and gives life, life to the world. They say it to him, Lord, always give us this bread. Jesus said, replied to them, I am the bread of life. The one who comes to me will never be hungry. And the one who believes in me as a savior will never be thirsty. For that one will be sustained spiritually. But as I told you, you have seen me and still you do not believe. All the Father gives will give me who will come to me. And the one who will come, I will most certainly not cast out. I will never, never reject anyone who follows me. For I have come down from heaven to do the will, to, not to do my own will, but to do the will of him who sent me. This is the will of him who sent me, that all he has given me, I lose nothing, but that I give new life and raise it up on the last day. For this is my Father's will and purpose, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him and says him, will have eternal life. And I will raise him up from the dead on the last day. On verse 30, it says, verse 30, So they said to you, what signs attesting miracles will you do that we may see it and believe it? What supernatural work will you do as proof? Our Father is taking them in the wilderness. Amen. They are asking for a sign. Mm -hmm. They have just been fed out of five loaves and two fish, mm -hmm. but still they are asking for a sign. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the fact that God was enough, isn't it enough, enough sign? Yes. The fact that you have breath in your life, in your lungs, isn't it an enough sign? No. The fact that he has clothed you, isn't it an enough sign? But he's still asking, what signs shall we do as proof? I don't know how much proof you need, brother. I have got enough proof. Amen. And Jesus, verse 20, 34, he says, they said to him, Lord, give us this bread. He had told them that, uh, as I'll, I'll read from 33, 32. Jesus said to them, I assure you, not so many say to you, it is not Moses who gave you the bread out of heaven, but it was my father who gave you the true bread out of heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down out of heaven and gives life to the world. And they say, what shall we do to get this man? They are with him and still they don't recognize it. With everything that is happening, they still don't see it. The Bible says that blessed are the eyes that see. Amen. And blessed are the ears that hear. Yes. For many wanted to hear and many wanted to see, but they could not see. Blessed is your eyes and your ears. If you can see him and hear him this morning, blessed are you. Amen. And he says to them, I am Amen. the bread of life. Amen. I am. That's just tap me. I am. We hear firstly in Exodus when God was telling Moses that go and speak to the Israelites and tell the Egyptians to let my people go. And he was saying, how can I go? Who shall I say has sent me? And he says, go and tell them that the I am, I am. And now he's saying also, I am the bread of life. I am. And today God is telling somebody that I am whoever you want me to be. I am your provider. I am your comforter. I am your peace. I am your healer. I am everything. I am a father. I am a husband. I am everything. You just have to choose who you want him to be. I am. 
that provides for my daily needs. The Bible tells me that he provides me to everything, pertaining life and godliness. So everything that I need in my physical life, he provides. In my spiritual life, he provides. He does not also forget my emotional life. He provides everything. Yes. We are him. The bread of life. Funny enough, bread is full of carbs, eh? Yeah. <laughs> One week, I said I am going to fast on carbs. And I was eating things like soup, salads, and everything. By the end of the week, my whole body was in pain. And I was shaking. And I realized that why am I in pain? Literally to touch my head, it was painful. I could feel the physical pain. Then I realized, oh, I haven't been eating carbs. Then I thought, oh, let me just eat, eat a little bit of salsa. I ate a little bit of salsa. The minute I eat the salsa, the pain go away. <laughs> he said, I am the bread of life. He sustains our daily bread. I always want to stand here and proclaim what God has done in my life. <laughs> few months ago, I did a very thing that I called stupid then. I wake up in the morning and I went to work. I remember it was a Monday. By the end of the day, I had resigned from work. I did not have another job. I did not have another income. I did not have anything. I just thought on my lunch break that, you know what, I've had enough, I'm going to resign. And I quickly went and put a resignation letter. And my resignation letter had three lines in it. And I went and I sealed it in and I put it in my manager's office. And then I came home. Now I'm thinking, have I done something good? What have I done? What have I done? Now I'm starting now Googling to look at how do you write a resignation letter? I put it in And then I realized that I had left them so many things. And I was like, okay. I will rush quickly in the morning to go to work and take it out and write another one, proper one, and put it in. While I was go driving, I was thinking deep in thoughts, have I done the right thing? What is going to happen? How is the money going to be paid? How is the bills going to be done with? Have you ever been like, you are in a prayer? I was praying. In my mind, I was praying, but I was also deep in thoughts. And while I was praying and deep in thoughts and everything, and I'm also driving. Women, we are so much good at multitasking. I actually muttered the words, Lord, I trust you. And then, by then, I realized that, ah, I'm actually praying. Subconsciously, I am praying. But I'm also thinking about how things are going to be. And I said, Lord, I trust you. I got to work at quarter past eight. At quarter past nine, I received a message of this call. And I said, ah. Who's calling me? I don't get this number sent in my phone. The project person kept phoning and phoning and phoning and phoning. So I immediately went for my break. And I said, I'm sorry. You were phoning me. I don't know. Who are you? He said, Shami, I have got a job for you. Wow. I said, Ha, wait up. He started explaining it. And I said, Okay. I might wait, I can't talk right now. It's not good for me to talk about this while I'm doing. I will talk to you later. I went out. By the time I had what went for lunch, I had received five missed calls from different people offering me jobs. Now I had done what I thought was stupid. But not knowing that God was leading me. Now I have a problem now of what to choose now. I don't know who to go with now. And I was like, God, you have put me in this position now. Help me. God is our daily bread. The I am, like I say, he can be whatever you want him to be. Bread. Gives. We feel it. I don't know about you, me, when I eat bread, it gives me feeling. It gives me strength and it gives me satisfaction. A 
And Jesus is saying that. When you come to me and bring me the bread of life, you will never be hungry and you will never be thirsty. So now he's not only feeling just my hunger, he's also feeling my thirst. So he's providing everything he has already seen that, oh, she's thirsty, let me provide for her. Oh, she needs that, let me provide for her. He's meeting all my every need, both physical and spiritual. And today God is telling somebody that I can be the I am the I am. I can be that book of life for you. And funny enough, sometimes we get proud of going to places that does not satisfy us. We come out, we keep looking for things that does not fulfill us. We keep looking for things that does not nourish us. We go, there's somebody you go to, you got a person who you say, you know, she's my to go person. But she does not satisfy you. She satisfies you for a moment. So somebody say, if I can just play this game, I'll be okay. If I can just watch this channel, I'll be okay. If I can just go and work a little bit more and have more money, maybe I'll be okay. If I can just take this addiction, maybe I'll be okay. It can only satisfy you for a moment. Let us not take the mistake of replacing God with material things. Because when we do that and we take that, it only satisfies for a moment. And the next day I am feeling empty again. Then I keep on going to that thing again and it does not fill me. And I keep on going again. It's only filling me just for a moment. I don't know about you, have you never had cravings? Sometimes I had weird cravings. I go there and I say, you know what? I want something very sweet. And you go and take a chocolate. You eat a chocolate. And after I eat a chocolate, oh, I want something salty. Yeah. Oh, you eat a, something salty. Oh, I want something sweet again. For Christ's sake, make up your mind. But I can't make up your mind. I keep on eating this. And I keep on eating it. I'm not hungry. But I want to remove that craving that I am. But I can't get it. You keep on touching that and there's no way. Let me just try this one. Maybe it will work, but it's not working. Because you're going to the wrong place. Go to the bread of life. Jesus is the source. You're not confusing with anything else. And you know bread says daily bread. In Matthew it says give us our daily bread. The bread has to be eaten fresh. Have we ever tasted bread that's just coming out of the oven? <laughs> and you spread the butter and you turn it down to it. Who? It has to be eaten fresh. When you eat stale bread, who has eaten stale bread before? I have ate it before and then you realize, oh my God, there is a mold in there. And the minute you realize that you have eaten your stale bread, you are actually quickly to test your stomach. What's happening with my stomach? What's happening? Because when you eat stale bread, it's got toxic chemicals in there. And those toxic chemicals, they, they can cause you sickness or even death because of the mold on the bread. So some of us, we are still eating toxic chemicals from yesterday. We are taking toxic things that does not sustain us. We are taking, putting in mold in our body, putting in mold in our stomach. No wonder why you are sick, brother. <laughs> Be careful. It will lead you to death. Oh, what God wants to do is just to give you a daily dose. Just fresh bread daily. Just a little bit of mercy daily. Just a little bit of strength daily. And you know the good thing about it is he knows the provision that you need. The last Sunday I came, my sister said so beautiful. She made me cry. The previous night I could not sleep. I was crying, I was in tears, and I could not pray. 
I wanted to pray, but my heart was so heavy. And I couldn't do it. I just put music. Even the music was playing, but I was not getting anything out of it. And I woke up early and I come to church. And she said, she was singing about what I was feeling. Every song she sang, it was what I was feeling. When I left this place, I felt good. That was God providing my day. Because he knew that day, that's all I needed. The wind came and preached, but I was full already. I just ended up having a dessert, but the man knew I had it already. Verse 48, it says, I am the bread of life, the living bread, which gives and sustains them. I don't know about your Bibles, that the bread of life, is it called capital letter B on your Bibles? Um, mine, no, mine is called capital letter B on it. I'm using the amplified one. And it's on, on life is what is called capital letter L on it. Which means it's not something just lightly. It's the bread of life. I am the bread of life. The living bread. Which gives and sustains life. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness. And they died. This is the bread that comes down out of heaven. So that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that comes down out of heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, believes in me, accept me as Savior, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give for, for the life of the world is my flesh, my body. Then the Jews begin to argue with one another, saying, How can this man give us this fresh to eat? And Jesus said to them, I assure you, and solemnly say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, unless you believe in me as Savior and believe, you believe in me as the saving power of and the saving power of my blood which will be shared for you, you do not have life in yourselves. The one who eats my flesh and drinks my blood believes in me and accepts me as their savior, as eternal life. That is, now possesses me, and I will raise him up from the dead on the last day. For my flesh is true spiritual food, and my blood is true spiritual drink. He who eats my flesh and drink my blood, believes in me and accepts me as their Savior, remains in me and I, in the same way, remain in him. Just as the living Father sent me, I live because of the Father. Even so, the one who feeds on me, believes in me, accepts me, and accepts me as their Savior, will also live because of me. This is the bread which comes down out of heaven. It is not like the manna that our fathers ate and they eventually died. One who eats this bread, believes in me, accepting me as their savior, will live forever. Now he's talking also about salvation. And he's talking about full life, eternal life. And he's telling us that if you come to me and you believe in me, and you eat my bread and accept me as your Savior, you will have eternal life. I believe that we are all here and have accepted the Lord as our personal Savior. If there is now somebody who is not here and like, you know what? I don't think I have accepted it. Oh, I don't think I have been living according to his ways. 
I stepped out the room and I need to come. He is the chance. He is here. And he wants to give you his deliverance. He wants you to give his deliverance. As we are going to partake in our communion, I believe today you take it with a different name. Remember, know that this is the bread of life that you are taking. And it says when you take it, you are taking.